Welcome to a tour of Notion Finance Tracker version 2.0. In this video, I'll show you how to use the template and I'll also walk you through all of its updated features. I'd like to thank everyone from the previous video for leaving their feedback in the comment section. All of your suggested changes have now been added to the template. So the main changes that we have, we now have two new folders, uh, so we can now track our debts and loans, um, and all recurring payments and any payments towards paying off a debt or loan is now linked to our expenses. Okay, so I'll first show you how to set up your accounts, um, and then I'll walk you through the quick capture buttons, and then we'll go into each one of the folders and I'll show you what is in each one of those. So when you first download this template, the first thing you want to do is you want to set up your accounts. And so I've got some examples in here already, so you can either change those or you can add in some new accounts. So all you have to do is enter in the name of the account and your starting balance from the time that you download the template. And so all of your totals are automatically calculated based on your income, your expenses, and any transfers into the account or out of the account, and any loan payments made into the account. Okay, so I'll give you an example of this. If you click on our checking account, um, as you can see, our starting balance was 7500 And so all of our totals here are calculated based on our income, our expenses, um, transfers in and transfers out. And then lastly, our loan payments into the account. And all transactions will show the amount of money as well as the date that it was made. Okay, so once your account is set up, we can begin to track our finances. And so the best way to do this is using our quick actions. So let's go ahead and add a new income here and we can go ahead and give it a name. So we'll just call it received payment. Um, and then all we have to do is we have to enter in the date firstly. So we'll give it today's date. And then we have to select the account that it is made to. So we'll say the checking account, um, the source of income. So we'll just say this is a gift and the amount of money. So this is a big gift, we'll call it $500. Okay, and then you can choose to add in extra notes or a statement. And you can also relate it to any savings or financial goal. Okay, so we'll also add in a new expense. Um, so we'll call this one coffee. And once again, we'll have to select the date. So we'll choose today's date. And we'll also select the checking account. So we can also categorize our expenses into different categories. So we can choose food. And then lastly, we just have to enter in the amount. Okay, and then we can also relate our expenses to any recurring payment, debt or loan. Okay, so that was how to use the quick actions. So now I'll walk you through each of the folders, starting with the accounts folder. And so here's where we can find all of our accounts and we can open up any account um, to see its details. So we've got all of its totals as well as a complete log of everything that happens with the account. And each account will show its current balance. Below this, we have a breakdown of our accounts so we can view all totals for all incomes, expenses and so on. Um, and we've got our totals along the bottom here. Next up, we have our categories folder. So here's where we can categorize our income and expenses into different categories. And so for our income, we have our work, we've got investing, side hustle and gifts. And so each one will show the monthly income, the yearly income and total income. And if we head over to our expenses here, as you can see, we have our expense categories. And again, we've got our monthly expenses, yearly expenses and total expenses. So we can click on any category to view its details so we can view its related income or expenses. Next up is our incomes folder. So here's where we can track all of our income and we can sort by those received today or those received recently. And each income will show the amount of money received. Below this, we have a breakdown of all of our income. So we can view its name as well as the source of income and the account that it was made to, the amount, the date, the created time, and we also have our total for the month. Next up is our expenses folder. So following a similar layout to income, we can view our expenses made today and also those made recently. And once again, we can view the amount of money for each expense. Below this, we have our breakdown, so we can view all of our expenses here, as well as the category um, and the account that it was made from, the amount of money, the date it was made on, and the created time, as well as our total expenses for the month. Next up is our transfers folder. So here's where we can track all of our transfers made between accounts, and each transfer will show the amount of money that was moved, as well as the account that it was from and transferred to. Okay, and then once again, we can sort by those that are made today and transfers made recently. Below this, we have our breakdown, so we can view all of our transfers, um, as well as the account that it was from, and to, the amount of money that was transferred, the date it was made on, and the created time. And once again, we have the total amount of money transferred over the month. So just to give you an example of how transfers work, we have our checking account with 14,000 here, and we have our savings account with 30,000. Um, so if we head back over to the transfers folder, and um, we have our savings here, where we moved money from the checking account to the savings account, and if we just add an extra zero to the amount of money that was moved, just to make it extra obvious, and head back over to our accounts, as you can see, the checking account is now down 50,000 and the savings account is now up 50,000. Next up is our recurring folder. So here's where you can manage all of your subscriptions and each subscription will show the total cost as well as the subscriber status. And we can sort by those that are active and also inactive subscriptions. 
Below this, we have our breakdown of all recurring payments. And so here we have our subscriptions as well as the billing period, which can be toggled from the dropdown. Um, we then have the subscription cost as well as the calculated monthly and yearly costs. And then we have totals underneath those. Um, so if we change the billing period to weekly, for example, as you can see, the monthly cost and the yearly cost has now updated to show that. Okay, and lastly, we have the subscription status as well as the renewal date and calculated next renewal date. Okay, so in this updated version, we can now relate our expenses to our subscriptions. And so if we go ahead and open up our Amazon subscription, as you can see, we have the details, um, but we also can now relate our expenses. So here we have the actual payment of $9.99 towards Amazon Prime. Okay, so next up we have our new folder, which is our debts folder. And so here's where we can track all of our debts. And so each one will show the debt amount, the debt paid, and the remaining debt, as well as a checkbox for clearing the debt. Okay, so if we open this up, um, once again, it's related to our expenses. So as you can see, we have a payment of 250 here towards paying off this debt. We can also sort our debts by those that are active, as well as those that have been cleared. And so that's just a case of checking the checkbox. Um, below this, we have our breakdown of all of our debts. And so we have the debt name, as well as the debt amount, the debt that has been paid, and the calculated debt remaining. Um, and then once again, we've got our totals underneath. So we can set deadlines for paying off the debt, and we have a formula for calculating the days remaining. And lastly, we have a checkbox for clearing the debt. Next up is our loans folder. And so of course, loans are a form of debt apart from we are receiving money. And so each loan here will show the total loan amount received as well as the amount of money that we have paid off of that loan and the remaining loan to pay off. And then we have a checkbox for clearing it. Okay, so if we open this, as you can see, it's related to our expenses. So we have a payment of $500 here uh, towards paying off our student loan. And similar to our debts folder, we can sort by those that are active and those that have been cleared. And once again, that's just a case of checking the checkbox. Okay, so below this, we have our breakdown of all of our loans. And so we had the name of each loan, as well as the account that it was made to. Uh, we had the loan amount. We also have the amount of money that we have paid towards paying off that loan, as well as the calculated loan remaining and totals underneath. Okay, so once again, we can set a due date for paying off the loan. And we also have a formula for calculating the days remaining. And then lastly, we have a checkbox for clearing the loan. Next up, we have our budgets folder. So here's where we can set our budgets for each expense category. And each category will show the monthly budget that we set for it, as well as the amount of money that we spent on that category already for the month. And then we have a progress bar to show this. So let's go ahead and open up this category and then we can view all of its details as well as the expenses made towards this budget. Okay, and then below this, we have a breakdown of all of our budgets. So we have our categories as well as our expenses for the month so far, and we have our monthly budgets and our progress towards those budgets. And then we have totals underneath. So you can edit these budgets for each category. Um, so if we were to add a zero to this, for example, as you can see, the progress bar has now updated. Next up is our savings folder. So this folder is now quite a bit different from the previous version. So we can now put aside money towards various things and then track our savings towards them. So for example, here we have a family holiday with a target balance of $1,000 and a current balance of $125. And below this, we have a checkbox for completing the savings um, and also a progress bar for tracking our progress. Okay, so if we open this up, um, so our savings are linked to our income. So as you can see here, we have $125 from freelancing that we've put towards this family holiday. Okay, so we can also sort our savings by those that are active and those that have been completed. So once again, that's just the checkbox. Um, and then below this, we have our breakdown of all of our savings. And so we have the name of the savings. We have our current balance as well as our target balance. And then we have our totals underneath. We have a progress bar and then we have our target date for completion. Um, and then we also have our calculated days remaining and completed checkbox. Next up is our goals folder. So here's where we can set financial goals and it follows a similar layout to our savings folder as both our goals and savings are linked to our income. And so for example, here we have saved 10,000 uh, pounds with a target balance of $10,000 and our current balance of $350. And we have a checkbox for completion and a progress bar. So once again, we can open this up and view our income that is related to it. So here we have stocks and we have a payment of $350 paid towards this goal. And once again, we can also sort by goals that are active and those that have been completed. Okay, and then below this, we have an overview of all of our goals um, based on the month. And so we've got a goal for January, February and March. Um, and then we can also swap from a monthly tab to a yearly tab to view our longer term goals. Um, so they're all in 2024, but you can drag and drop them around. So we can move this to 2025. Um, that I'll just change that back. And then below that, we have a breakdown of all of our goals. And so as usual, we've got the name of the goal as well as the current balance, the target balance and our totals underneath. Um, we then have our progress bar and we also have a target date 
and again our formula for calculating the days remaining. Now if it's less than zero, it will say overdue. And lastly, we've got our completed checkbox. Next up, we have our summaries folder. So here's where we can find all of our financial summaries. Um, and we can view this for the day, month, year, and all time. And each one will show the total income, the total expenses, and the final balance. And lastly, we have our databases folder. So here's where you can find all source databases used throughout the template. So I wouldn't recommend changing this unless you're trying to change the template. Uh, so that's databases. And lastly, back in our dashboard here, we have an overview of all of our accounts. Um, we also have our incomes and expenses, uh, and we have a tab to view just today uh, for both of those. We then have our income sources and expense categories, which can be swapped using the tabs. Um, and then we have our transfers and we can view our recent transfers also. Uh, we then have our recurring payments and inactive subscriptions here. Uh, and then we have an overview of our budgets and savings and also our goals, uh, which can be sorted by active or complete. And then lastly, we have our financial summaries. Okay, so that was a tour of Notion Finance Tracker. I hope this video helped. And if you want to get this template, there will be a link in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching.